And we're going to start today with rookie defensive end, Dean Lowry. And Lowry had a interesting year last season. Uh, he's from the same town that I am, so that is interesting and unique for me. Uh, so we're going to start with him. Uh, he's a defensive lineman from Northwestern, was a fourth-round pick. Uh, interesting athletically, the Packers thought that they could use him um, as a rush defensive lineman in the interior. They talked about using him as a guy standing up. They didn't end up doing that a whole lot last year. Um, so he had a bit of an interesting year. So here's – he was listed as a starter for some of the year but did not um, end up doing – being a starter, quote-unquote, as a defensive lineman in the Packers defense with the way Dom Capers does things doesn't mean a ton because of the way they play nickel almost 80% of the time, and that means two down defensive linemen. Um, so him being a starting quote-unquote defensive end did not matter that much because he didn't play a ton of snaps because of that. So at the beginning of the year, he was getting not a ton of snaps. Uh, he wasn't playing a ton. But by the end of the year, you could see some significant improvement, and it started to show up toward the end of the year, and you can see um, that he's starting to get some preseason hype here in 2017, his sophomore season. So here's some things from last year in a game against the Houston Texans that kind of show some of his ups and downs and where uh, they're looking to improve his game this year. So here's a play uh, in the first quarter. It's the second possession. The Texans fumbled on their first possession after running mostly no huddles. So they're coming out heavy here. And Lowry is actually going to be right here in the middle of your screen. He's lined up between a tackle and the extra tackle that the Texans have brought in. So they're playing heavy personnel right here, which is why the Packers are playing in their base defense. So it's Julius Peppers and Dayton Jones as their linebackers. And then they have their defensive linemen as Mike Daniels. Latroy Guyon is playing the nose. And then you have Dean Lowry playing here in – uh, in between these two players, uh, the tackle and the extra tackle, if you will. So the Packers are running a, instead of their traditional 2-4-5 here, they really are in their base 3-4 defense. And Morgan Burnett is actually walked up here. So this is a run-heavy uh, personnel here. And what the Packers really wanted their defensive linemen to do last year was suck up blockers in order to let their – that was a way they were trying to cover up their deficiencies at inside linebacker. So that's something they were trying to get here with Jake Ryan and Joe Thomas, who's playing inside linebacker here, and Burnett, who's right here behind the goalpost, as another walked-up linebacker here. What they want Lowry to do here is suck up a double team. They want Burnett to fill here, Ryan to fill here, and for Guyon to shoot this gap up here to fill uh, their run lanes here. So what happens here, as we can see is Osweiler gets ready here. He's gonna take the snap and watch. Lowry holds the point of attack initially, which is good. Okay, so he's got the point of attack held, but he's gonna get greedy here and turn sideways to get skinny to beat the double team. Now that's not the bad part, but the problem is he's a little too slow in beating the double team and gets pushed out of his gap. Burnett also gets beat here by the fullback, by Lowry getting beat into his gap and, dry, and getting into Jake Ryan's gap here, because this is Ryan's gap that Lowry is pushing into by getting skinny on a double team. The double team has now been passed off, and the tackle, the initial tackle has gotten off to the second level. He's passed him off. Lowry is trying to get skinny and get around and get greedy to tackle the running back. He's now in Ryan's lane and that opens a running lane for Blue. The hole is now here. If Lowry were to just stay in his lane and allow Ryan to fill that, this would be a one yard gain, maybe less. Or if nothing else, Blue has nowhere to go. Instead, Peppers makes a good play here to keep it to a three or four yard gain after initial contact. But if we go back,
if we go back, you'll see pretty quickly here that Lowry made an error that opened this play up for the Texans to make here. Instead of simply, as Bill Belichick's famous saying is, of do your job, he didn't do his job. His initial job was to hold the point and beat to the outside and fill his lane. Instead of doing that, he got beaten, and washed and took what could have been an easy play or a negative play for the Packers into a long play or a longer play, four yard gain for the Texans. For example of heavy personnel, the Texans have brought in an extra offensive lineman. Lowry's back in the game, he's right here. Packers are in their base defense, and Lowry is, again, responsible for taking on a double team to fill in a running gap. Here is him doing a much better job of holding up against a double team and turning it for another play. Here, he doesn't hold the point of attack as well, but he holds his ground well enough to let Thomas come in and fill his lane. No, Lowry doesn't make the tackle, but... Something that they always say about 3-4 defensive linemen, it ain't glamour work here. Nothing going to be pretty about this unless your name is J.J. Watt. Well, Dean Lowry ain't J.J. Watt. He just kind of looks like him. So, nothing pretty here, but much better job here. He doesn't get greedy. The Texans only get two. All right, everyone likes sexy plays. You've seen enough of him doing dirty work. So here's Lowry making a big play in the course of the game uh, against the Texans again here. Packers again lined up in base. Uh, the Texans have an extra offensive lineman here again, but instead of running the ball this time, the Texans actually decide uh, to do throw a little wrinkle here. It's play action, but Lowry beats his man right off the line. He just blows right past him uh, and actually gets a sack out of the deal here. Um, so he just kind of blows him right off of the ball here. So let's look at it from behind here. So Lowry is right here. And again, his responsibility usually is going to be to take on a double team. Uh, but it appears that on the snap of the ball that Lowry doesn't get any teamed. Uh, his quickness is actually pretty good here um, off the ball. But nobody touches him, and he actually slips, which plays to his advantage. But his initial burst off the ball is something that was good coming out of Northwestern. It was a big deal coming into the season and it's something that's actually progressed as he's gone into his second year but he beats the guy clean off of the line of scrimmage uh, and there's three guys none of them even touch him I mean look at this gap here there's three guys here and none of them even look at him they're all focused uh, on Dayton Jones here nobody looks at Dean Lowry and Brock Osweiler doesn't stand a chance it is a big play for Dean Lowry uh, in the course of the game, and a the first of two consecutive sacks in a couple given weeks. And I will show you the second one here momentarily. Uh, the second one comes against Russell Wilson, so a little bit more mobile uh, of a target here for Lowry. But this one's unblocked, but it's still a nice play to see. All right, so let's get this out of the way. Everybody knows the scouting terms that come with Caucasian players. Jim Rat. Son of a coach's kid, high motor. So forgive me, that's something I'm about to use here when it comes to Dean Lowry. But watch the play. Lowry's lined up right here next to Clay Matthews. Uh, this is a second down play against Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Big game for the Packers. Uh, their defense much maligned, obviously. And the Seahawks were one of the better teams in the NFC. And the Packers were in the midst of a two-game winning streak on their way to winning the NFC North and the infamous run the table line from Aaron Rodgers. So Lowry is lined up here over the guard and off the snap doesn't really beat anybody. It's a twist between Lowry and Matthews. They're actually trying to free him up. Wilson steps up into the pocket and is actually beaten by Mike Daniels here who pushes the pocket. Lowry is now free. But instead of giving up on the play as Wilson tries to escape, and this is where it gets scary for any NFL defense, 
Because when Wilson escapes, he's lethal. Kudos to the Packers defense here. Burnett's got his man. Quentin Rollins back here has his man covered. And Demarius Randall's in good enough coverage here to where Wilson can't find his man just yet under duress. Lowry sticks with his man and sticks with the pressure to find Wilson. And with his high motor, there's your buzzword, drags him to the ground and gets a sack. There's your big play from Dean Lowry against the Seahawks. Let's look at it from the other angle. The other angle, okay, so Lowry is right here. Again, so his twist, his job is to come this way while Matthews bends around the edge here. So they're trying to free up Matthews to get the pressure right in Russell Wilson's face. And the easiest way to beat a mobile quarterback like Wilson is to pressure him right up the middle because it takes away escape lanes because everything is clogged. Plus, he's a shorter guy, so if the pressure's in his face, no offense to the short guys, but it's true. Pressure right in his face, it's harder for him to see his targets. And Russell Wilson is most dangerous when he can step up and escape to the side like so. So, what happens here is Lowry and Matthews. Here's where your side is right here. So the ball gets snapped, and Lowry tries to get across his face. But Ifedi doesn't buy it. Lowry doesn't actually do a very good job of getting this guy's attention enough to where Matthews can be freed up. J.R. Sweezy also is not taken occupied enough to where the point of even if it did work, he would have probably stoned Matthews to the point here. So nothing's open downfield. And Wilson is trying to find an escape route because nothing's there. Mike Daniels, doing what he always does, kicking guards' asses and pushing this guy into the backfield. What that does is it shuts down an escape lane here for Wilson. Joe Thomas's job is to spy Wilson so he can't escape up the middle because there's a lot of green out here if Thomas isn't there. So... Wilson tries to jump. How he didn't fumble on this play, I have no idea. But he didn't. Wilson comes down with the ball. Lowry sticks with the play. Comes through. Wraps Wilson up. And down he goes. So, not exactly Reggie White in his prime there. But, pass rushers, Sometimes you just want to see what you call a garbage time sack. That's a garbage sack, but Dean Lowry will take that in his young career. And he got Russell Wilson on the ground. That's hard for a lot of people to do. The play doesn't start the greatest, but the finish is beautiful, and it all goes the same in the book. It's a sack for Dean Lowry against Russell Wilson, and it's something for him to build on in his young career. And at the beginning of the year, he wasn't anywhere near those guys on the quarterback. So it's nice for him to build on something good for Dean Lowry to keep going on as he goes into his second season here uh, for the Green Bay Packers as a starting now defensive lineman. All right, to his second season here, we've got Dean Lowry in his second year, as I said, against the Philadelphia Eagles. You've heard a lot of Dean Lowry hype coming out of camp if you are a Packers fan. Um, you know, the, the jokes are going to come out that he is just like J.J. Watt. Obviously, the Packers would be thrilled if they have J.J. Watt in the middle of their defensive line, but those expectations uh, are a little high. Let's just put it that way. Watt, when healthy, is probably the best defensive player in football, and Dean Lowry is a second-year defensive lineman hoping to be an impact player in the National Football League this year. So Dean Lowry is right here on this play. It is fourth and one. Uh, from about the six-yard line, the Packers have already given up a touchdown here in this early preseason contest, uh, and they're in danger of falling behind by double digits here. And uh, Dean Lowry is actually just going to eat Chance Warmack here, the left guard, 
uh, and disrupt the entire play here. You get a good glimpse of his burst off the line of scrimmage, his size, uh, and his strength. And he really, even though Kentrell Bryce and Joe Thomas are going to be the ones that make this play, uh, it's really Dean Lowry that makes this play. Again, 3-4 D linemen don't get a lot of credit, but this is a guy, he just blows him off the ball, and he's in the backfield, blowing the lane wide open. Bryce slows him down, misses the tackle. The Packers had about 100 of those on Thursday night. And then you got Rollins and Joe Thomas finishing it off. But if we go back... You get the burst again. There's nobody in the middle of the field, as the announcer denotes. So if anybody gets past this front line, he is long gone here. But Lowry's on the line of scrimmage here. And as I said, if 3-4 linemen don't get any credit whatsoever, uh, and this is one of those plays that won't show up on the stat sheet because he didn't make a tackle in the backfield, uh, but really he blows this lane wide open uh, because it disrupts the entire play. Again, if Bryce makes the tackle here, it's a tackle for loss, and that credit really goes to Lowry on this play. Uh, but he just blows Warmack off the ball completely and allows the Packers to get a big stop. So there is, and it concludes, our first video with Dean Lowry uh, for his first couple games here of uh, the preseason and some of last year, or his first game of the preseason and a game from last year. So if you guys can do me a favor and hit the subscribe button down there, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Jacob Westendorf, and let me know uh, some other things you'd like to see. I'd appreciate it.